Always. It's good stuff. Ooh, Alex shows up today. Mm -hmm. Alex, put your hood on. Uh, he yeah. looks like Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dress code today. I drank a lot of eggs this morning. Good. <laughs> I'm getting big, yeah. Yeah. Putting on the weight. Got a big fight coming up. Yeah. Huge bully at, at my school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Man, Julie, Julie's here too. Man, what a special day. Well, let's go ahead and dive into uh, Isaiah chapter 6. I think we left off uh, after verse 6. Um, so, picking up on verse 7. At the top, Alex. Alex, you get the pleasure of starting us off today. Read until you find a knock knock. Vayaga al pi vayomer fine naga ze al saraf sa. Um, and he touched upon my mouth mm -hmm. um, and said, Behold, this has touched. Um, your lips. Yeah, I was waiting for you to keep going, but uh, I told you to stop at the out knock, so there you go. Uh, Katie, then you're up. Uh. All right. Um, Vasar of Bone Ka, the Chata. The Chatatka to Kufar, to Kufar. So. Um, in turn, Avoneha, um, Avon, 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 um, iniquity, your iniquity and your sin to Kufar. Um, Kufar is something like atonement. That's right. Okay, so you got all of the words. I'm going to try to make some sense of those. Um, okay. Um, turn aside from your iniquity. Well, so you're, who's the subject of this? Um, that's a great question so, that I wasn't paying attention to. Well, we don't, we don't have a subject, so we have to supply one. And you're supplying Isaiah, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. But Isaiah is the one who has been cleansed. Uh, so I'm thinking that uh, it's the sin that is the subject. So your sin has been turned. removed or yeah. turned away. or mm -hmm. The NIV says departed. So your okay. sin, I like removed. Your sin has been removed. Yeah, your iniquity has been removed and your sin has been atoned. Right. Or, or covered up or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Cool. Good. Um, so this one is a little bit uh, ambiguous because Isaiah could be the subject of this because this is third masculine singular. But if we look down here, we've got feminine singular, a noun, and a feminine singular verb. So Isaiah can't be the subject of this one. So this has to be the subject. And because they're in parallel, that makes me think that this one is also the subject of its verb, just based on the parallelism there. That's awesome. Yeah. All righty. Uh, Jonah, you are next. Let's scroll up a little bit. Vaishma et kol Omer 
את מי אשלח ומי ילך לנו. And I heard the voice of my Lord saying, uh, who will I send and who will go for us? Very nice. Um, shall we ask the perpetual question of who the us is? <laughs> I, I figured it was God in the heavenly court, something like that. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Anybody want to throw out Trinity there just for fun? I think it, it's probably the Trinity. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. and it kind of goes back to creation, let us. Who's let us? Yeah. Yeah, there are several answers to that question, um, and it's really an interpretive uh, move. Um, I like to try to figure out what Isaiah would have thought the answer to that question was. Um, not understanding any concept of the Trinity as far as we know. Um, Isaiah may have been more drawn to the idea of the heavenly court or some sort of just royal we. God's just kind of being pompous here and talking in the third person plural or in the first person plural about himself. Um, so there's a lot of options there and not enough clues, I think, for a definitive answer. All right, very good. So the classic, uh, who shall I send? So who's going to put this on their next mission trip t-shirt? <laughs> that's, not, that's not a bad idea. Just in Hebrew, though, because it's much cooler. It'd be right. cool in Hebrew. That'd be super cool. Um, let's see here. Because Julie uh, decided to um, throw in a comment, she got bumped to the top of the screen. So <laughs> <to death. laughs> So that means I go to the next. I'll do that. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean you can't. Oh yo mar, he nani, shalak, ha, me. Shalak heini. Shalak heini. Shalak heini. So send me. Behold, and I said. <laughs> and I said. <laughs> and I said, behold, send me. Yeah. Okay. So, I got that one. That's easy for me. Yeah. And I said, "Behold me, send me." The behold me. That's me. true. Or here am I? Or here, behold, here I yeah. am. Here I am. Send me. That's oh, that's yeah. very nice English way. Of it. But he's pretty excited about this. It looks like. Hey, <laughs> pick me, pick me. Which is interesting that he would be excited about it, right? I mean, you just had coal put on your lips. Well, yeah, he just had some flaming dragon you know, make him kiss a hot coal. I'm sure he wants to get out of there. <laughs> you would or you'd be like, I don't know. Anything's better than this. Maybe. All right, Brian. Well, let's see here. That's not too many. Uh, it's not too long of a phrase there for you. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Hold on. Oh, that's better. That's a little better. We almost got you. A little bit. A little bit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, <clears throat> so, Vayam, Vayamar, Elek, or Lek, Vayamar, Vayamar, Rek, Vayamar Ta. Who's doing the talking? Um, I'm not sure. Is it still Isaiah? No. So look at your uh, your yod here. If this was first person, all we'd have is an olive, but the yod tells us it's third person. Okay. So and he said. So God's talking, and he said, okay. he "Go." Said, go. Um, and I. No, that's not I. And you. And you. That's right. Um, 
Oh, to the people. Uh, to the people. Let's say, um, sorry, I'm trying to. That's right, and you will say to this people. Oh, this, that's right. Yeah, so this, the, this, uh, they're trying to, whenever uh, Hebrew wants to make something very specific, uh, the demonstrative pronoun will follow after the noun. So that makes it confusing for us because uh, the demonstrative pronoun always precedes in English. There you have it. Um, all right, I think that was everybody. Back to the top. Um, Julie, you're at the top. Okay, I'm a, sorry, I wasn't ready. Okay. Um, Shemeu, Shemeo. Shemu, Shemo, Shemo, Shemu, Shemo, Shemu, Shemo, Vaal, Tavanu, Tavayanu. Tavayanu. Tavinu. Tava. Tavi. Tavinu. Oh. Okay, is that and then vai var um uru rao rao va al tarau te da u. Uh, okay. Oh, so yeah. Te. <laughs> no wonder I have so much so much trouble translating. I can't even say it right. Te ra u. Okay. So here, here, but here, here. Who's the here? Who's doing the hearing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you. It's they are hearing to them. They with the u. They hear. 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 So they will. Uh, they will hear, or in, they will hear, or they are supposed to hear. Well, normally our infinitive absolute will precede its verb, but this is poetry, so you know who cares? Uh, it's just coming after for the fun of it. Um, so surely they will hear. Okay. And then we'll probably say okay. but for this vowel, but. But they will not. Um, Bana is you vocab I, words. I know. Um, I don't have that. I know it's understand, but I don't know. Isn't it understanding? It is. But I don't know what that is. It bana bana is understand. Bean buy B like be, bait uh, your noon. Bait. Yod noon. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, so surely you're going to hear, but then no, you're not going to understand. And seeing, you're going to surely see, but you're not going to see it. But you're not going to perceive. You it. keep saying you. Uh, who is I not, or, talking about? Uh, to the people, because it's what he's saying to the people. Right. So they. So God is saying. So they. So it's they, not you. Right. It's God's they. You're right. Isaiah. And okay, so God's talking to Isaiah, saying, "Okay, you're surely they will hear it, but they're not going to understand it, mm -hmm. and surely they're going to see it, but they're not going to perceive it." That's right. What you're about to do, right? That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. They will okay. not know. So both of these they mean understanding in their own way, right? But so we can go maybe like NRSV does comprehend and understand. Um, but oh, yeah, but there's synonyms, so you just have to find synonyms in English in your translation. All right, to of my own. Uh, Jonah, you're right next up. Are we on verse 10 there? Um, yep. <clears throat> okay. Hashemem lev ha'am hazeh fa'aznav ha'chaber Ahakabed the Enav Ha Sha. Pronounce this word again for me. Get it right the, this time. You can do it. The Eznav. The Oznav. The Oz, that's right. Yeah. That's the hardest thing I think in Hebrew is to uh, on the fly get the comments good tone correct. That um, just comes 
really why I, when I see this word, I know it is O is because O Zen is ear, right? So when you learn O Zen, it's pronounced with the O, it's always pronounced with an O, even though you have an A vowel instead of full of now. All right, go for it. Okay. Um, this people's heart has grown fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I did translate that right. <laughs> um, and, well, it's his ears, but I'm going to say there. Um, and their ears, cockabayed, um, have grown heavy, mm -hmm. and their eyes, uh, um, have become blind. That's right. Shin, iron, iron, um, to become blind. Good. Yeah, so a bunch of words that are new to us. Um, but the rest of it is pretty straightforward, I suppose. Um, Alex. Pen, ear, re, the ena, uva, uvo. Zena. Uva Oznav. Uva Oznav. Uh, Ishma. Uh, Ulva. Uvo. Ulva. Uva. Yavin. Va. Shav. The Rafa. Well. Tof. No odd knocks in that for that. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. It was other. Yeah. Uh, Marco, go ahead. Um. Okay. Last. Um. He should see. Um. In his, with his eye. Eyes, um, and his ears. Um, he should hear. Um, and his something, and with his something, he should. You know, green. Yeah, do you remember Veen? We had it in a, a couple of verses ago, I think. Uh, perceive. Yeah, perceive or understand, yeah. Um, so what do we understand? Stuff? Oh, it's his heart. That's right, his heart. And, uh, and in his heart, perceive. Um, and so... Shop. Turn. He should turn. He turns. Rafa. Low. And he somethings himself. Yeah. Somethings. Rafa. To heal. Mark Ruffalo. Mark what? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that. I have, you know, this is a hard one I can remember, but you know, isn't that in Lion King? Isn't the doctor Rafa? So that like Rafiki. Rafiki. A Rafiki. So it's kind of like that, like healing. Rafiki is that you think? <laughs> Not is that bad. clever? Sure. <laughs> in terms sure. of remembering. Yeah, that works if you've seen the Lion King in the last decade. Haven't. Apparently, most of you have. That's cool. Um, okay, so something that we did not talk about in the previous clauses was the conjugate or the binyanim of the verbs. Um, so what are the binyanim of our three verbs? 
Hithil. They're all Hithil. So, um, let's see here. Their heart, the heart of this people has been caused to grow heavy. And their ears have been caused to grow. Well, this one's fat and this one's heavy. And his eye, their eyes have been caused to be shut. So that all of this, right? This is the result of, or this is the purpose of all of this uh, happening. Um, it's a bit of a challenging, I think, uh, thing that God is saying here. Why, why is God closing all of their hearts? I'm, well, I guess I'm assuming God's doing it, but maybe God isn't. Why are all, why are they not being allowed to hear and understand? Well, I think what I was more preoccupied with was what does it mean for someone's heart to grow fat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. It, it's a metaphor, I think. If it is a metaphor, then what sort of imagery do you get? Complacency. Say it again, Alex. Complacency. Complacency, yeah. Or I think another, I mean, I looked at another translation, it was calloused. <laughs> Callous and complacency, good. Um, what happens when a person grows fat? Well, they're unhealthy, so we talk about healing. Yeah, they become unhealthy, and so that's connected with healing, good. Um, another, you know, just a, a real basic thing that happens is that they aren't able to move, right, mm -hmm. as easily. Um, so I think I think there are metaphors being drawn here. Jonah, why was this preoccupying you? Oh, I just thought it was a weird way of saying something. I wondered if it was a uh, Hebrew figure of speech or something. Uh, I haven't seen this anywhere else. Um, but it's all in parallel with these uh, things. You know, the ears have grown heavy. So they stopped working. The heart has stopped working. And the eyes have all stopped working. What I find particularly interesting is the parallelism between the heart, the eyes, and the ears. Because these are two things that the eyes and the ears are things that we view as sensing the world. But the heart, normally, we're not connecting with that, that physical nature of mm -hmm. sense. But here, there are, these three things are in parallel. Um, so without their heart, they can't understand anything. And this really goes to the nature of how the Hebrew mind would view where certain things are happening inside the body. So when you think about where your thoughts are, where are your thoughts taking place? When you think your mind, your brain, head, right? We hear this voice in our head. We will even say that, right? We hear a voice in our head, mm -hmm. but in, in, as far as we can tell in Hebrew, um, all of their thinking was done inside their heart. So they mm -hmm. they have even heard their voice in their heart, not in their head like we do, or like, you know, maybe modern Western people do. Uh, they would feel things in their gut. So there are passages where it's talked about the feeling happening in the gut. Um, and we've learned that anger is inside of the nose. So, a lot of, you know, the feelings and things are in different places. Um, mm -hmm. This is one passage that highlights that this understanding is happening in the heart. Mm. Um, but yeah, just back to this, I don't know of any other, any parallel to this anywhere else. So that'd be an interesting little study. So um, when you're talking about that being all those being hippo verbs, mm -hmm. so that means there's a cause. So you're, the question then becomes, what is causing it or who's causing it, but you don't have any idea what that would be. Otherwise it might be what other form of verb would be used if it weren't hiffle. Well, if we wanted to, if we came up with the translation translation, like their heart has grown fat and their ears have grown uh, heavy and their eyes have grown or become blind or their eyes have shut. Um, then that just happened over time. But with the hiffle, we have to add in, they, this has been caused, something has caused this to happen. We mm. don't know, like you just said, we don't know who has caused it to happen. Maybe they caused it to happen. 
Um, although it likely would be in the NIFL if they were doing it to themselves. Um, that, that's what the, I wondered about that too, because um, I wondered if, because it's usually like their hearts have grown fat. It's translated in that sort of way, but mm -hmm. it seems like with the conjugation, it's more like he caused their hearts to grow fat. Um, is there some sort of like, is it sort of parallel to the idea of like the, the divine passive or? Or is it always a person? Maybe it's their circumstances has made their heart grow callous. So well, they're suffering. We don't know. It could be a, a circumstance or it could be a person. Something. We just know something caused it, but we don't, you can't say that that was a person that caused it or a, or even a, a, you can't separate between it being a person or an event. So, so we have some it. evidence in this clause here that I think will help me answer that question. But Joni, okay. you said divine what? Div did I hear you right? Some, something real like, like the divine passive. The divine, so tell me what you're, I, I'm not connecting with divine passive personally. Oh, um, yeah, maybe this is more of a Greek thing. Like sometimes a passive verb will be used and uh, the subject of the verb won't be explicitly stated. And the idea is that it's implied that the subject is God. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I don't, I don't see that here. Um, that I wonder, well, check the Greek. Maybe I wonder what the Greek translators did if they used that divine passive that you're talking about. That'd be interesting. Um, the reason... I don't see any grammatical reason why it has to be God, but the reason why I think it is, is because of this word right here, lest. Where? Lest. Oh, pen. it's covered up. Okay. The lest pen. So I think all of this has happened for a reason. And if it was just simply circumstances that caused this to happen, then circumstances don't have a motivation. They often, they don't have a reason for doing what they're doing. They're just happening. But God, I think, is motivated to shut their ears mm. so that they don't understand because it appears that God does not want them to be healed. Mm. Um, he wow. does not want them to turn away. He does not want them to be healed. This reminds me of Jonah, actually. Not, not you, Jonah, but the book Jonah, where Jonah does not want the Ninevites to hear lest they turn away and lest God heal them, right? But now God is saying, I don't want them to turn away lest they will, or I don't want them to understand lest they turn away and lest they get healed. Um, it seems to me that God actually wants to punish the people, right? Wow, that's pretty heavy theology. Yeah. I'm also assuming that, I haven't looked at this text in the Hebrew yet, but um, that it's probably a hifil that is being used when Moses goes to Pharaoh and Pharaoh's heart isn't healed and like Pharaoh's heart is caused to become yeah. harder. Yeah. I haven't checked that, but that, I mean, this sounds similar. Sorry, my occurrence just crashed. Yeah, exactly. Where and they're, they're in that passage, Pharaoh hardens his own heart sometimes, which I'm guessing is in the Nephal and then God hardens his heart. And it's likely that that's in the hippo causes his heart to be healed. Um, all, all that would be an interesting exegesis paper for the end of the term. If someone hasn't already selected their passage, that could be a really useful passage to look at. Um, I have to restart accordance because I had an error with one of my modules, apparently. Cannot find accordance files folder. Ah, I know. Okay. Easily fixed. Cancel. Okay. Oh. Rush. Sorry. Just go away. It does not want to. It's right here. I promise you, it's right here, people. What is it looking for? Accordance files? Just wanted to quit and start. This is so embarrassing. I'm sorry. Quit. I can't quit. Mm -hmm. It won't let me quit. Now it's. 
And that is not where my files are at. Hello. Oh. Does anybody have accordance open and you could share? Unless it's restart. Oh, oh, there it goes. Never mind. Every time I say that, it just magically starts. Are you good? Because I can pull mine up. No, I think I'm good now. Sorry. Okay. For your patience. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Well, I wonder if there's more in this uh, passage that will help us kind of explore this a little bit more. If that's actually the case, then maybe God will start doing some punishing. I think that's how this is interpreted in the New Testament, although I'm, you know, less familiar with the uh, New Testament. Um, but I, I think that's how Jesus uses this passage as he is sending out his people. Um, anybody know what chapter or where that's found, that whole passage where Jesus uses this passage? Yeah, it's Mark 4. It's where he's explaining why he speaks in parables. That's right. Um, but he tells his disciples everything in secret. Good. And he quotes this as a reason. Yeah, so that that parallels the same interpretation that I'm kind of running with here, that God's doing this intentionally, and Jesus was doing that intentionally so that they would not understand. I think it comes with the sense that the people are too far gone, and now God's happy with just this, uh, making them utterly unable to cooperate with him. Yeah. Good. So putting some responsibility on the people. So it's not just God being vengeful here, but they're so far gone that it's just time to bring judgment and to close this door. All right. Well, let's keep exploring this. We got uh, a little bit more time here. I've completely lost track of uh, where we are. So, 611, maybe. Uh, we're in 611. I just don't know whose turn it is. Oh, yes. uh, so I think maybe Alex, did you just read? I think it's Brian's turn. Okay, we'll make it Brian's turn. <laughs> well, that's actually, you know, not a bad little thing for Brian to pick up. So, <clears throat> Va Omar, uh, Odd, Matei. Uh, very little, so just translate. We, I think we're going to hear enough of you to tr when you translate. Um, okay, so that I said, um, is that, is that like up? Uh, no. This is until. Until, oh, okay. Until. Um, Mata is a new vocab word. When I look at Oh, sure. Um, but it means when. Until when. Oh, okay. I guess that would make sense, right? Um, yeah. Until when. Um, I, I oh, Adonai. Adonai. Yeah, and remember, it's my lord, right? My lord. Okay. Until when, my lord? It's normally translated just as lord, but, uh, you know, here we have the my sitting right there. Good. Um, and Jonah, I suppose you can pick up from there. It's quite a long verse, but you know, I think you can do it. Vayamar Adashir Im Sha'u Arim Me'ain Yoshev Uvatim Me'ain Adam Zaha Adama Tisha'e Shamama Shamama so, um, and who said until until which if um, <clears throat> sha -u. that's to destroy right um, to lay to waste, lay waste. Um, until they until they lay waste 
their cities, the cities. Um, from Aim, isn't that there is or there are? There are not. Yesh is there is, Aim is there. Oh, all oh, right. Um, so I'm not really sure how to translate that bit. Yeah. Um, So Until they lay waste. Yeah. Where is this here, Yoshi? Um, dwelling. Yeah. So. Until their uh, city. Until they lay waste their city. From there are no dwellings. From this is a bit challenging. From there is not. Um, so until their city is laid waste and I would say, and there are no dwellings, but that kind of is just breaking whatever's going on here. Uh -uh. Something like until they lay waste to the cities, um, until there's nowhere to dwell, something like that. Yeah. So I like until there's well, but. But isn't the dwelling, isn't that like, you know, dwelling is uh, being like for people, not a, not a building. That makes it sound like it's a building. Isn't it dwell? It's not dwellings. It's like people living, like inhabiting, right? Oh, no. there you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, wouldn't it, I mean, isn't that what that means? Yeah, it's, that's right. Ishav so, means like to dwell, dwelling. So until there's no one dwelling there. Yeah, do inhabitants, yeah, do one dwelling. Uh, yeah, so, on, so it's here. Until their things are laid waste and no one is drawn. Oh, yeah. No one is drawn. And this is all in parallel. Yeah, and, um, and there are no people in the houses. That's right. Um, and and the land is ruined of desolation yeah so we get or nice. until desolation ruins the land it looks like the verb the yeah. subject of the verb is shamama or well i guess it could be Adama. Could be either of those. Um, if, if word order has anything to do with anything here, um, which one, just based on word order, would you pick as the subject? Adama, probably. Yeah. It's probably Adama. Uh, it could have been fronted, I suppose. The object could have been fronted. And if so, if the object was fronted, then we would expect our subject to move to you. So normally our subject comes first, but if something gets fronted, then our subject follows its verb. Um, so that's, the grammar is not, I don't think, going to help us either way here, unfortunately. <laughs> we just got to pick which one, based on context, uh, makes the most sense. I don't know. Did you get any thoughts on that before I eat? How long until cities are waste without inhabitants? The house is wealthy and the land is utterly desolate. And the land is destroyed. Completely. That's a really challenging verse. Uh -huh. um, especially whatever is going on here. Um, but until seems to be the consensus within the NRSB. Uh, well, let's try to tackle one more verse and then we can uh, be done with the I don't, I don't have any idea. If Katie, when was the last time you read? It's been a little while? Oh, it's been a while. All right. Um, Verechak Adonai et Ha Adam. 
I'm going to keep going because I want to. Verba ha'ozuva bekerev ha'aretz. Um, and to be far, and so, and the Lord makes far the people, and, and the Lord makes the people far away, and multiplies ha'ozuva in the midst of the land. Mm-hmm. Um, Suffering, maybe? Sadness? Forsaking? That's what you're going with, a Zav? Yeah. Yeah. I think these are all good guesses. The forsakenness, emptiness, yeah. Mm-hmm. Zav. To abandon a Zav. But here must mean something a little bit different. Um, parse out Rehak. Um, I want to say Bob consecutive, um, PL maybe. Mm-hmm. Why Bob consecutive? Huh? Why Bob consecutive? Because there's a Bob there and I don't think that it's, <laughs> um. <laughs> if it is Bob consecutive, it has to have an imperfect prefix of some Okay. Sort. It could be a bog consecutive plus a perfect, but what I'm hearing you say is the past narrative conjugation. When you say bog consecutive, is that what you mean, the past narrative? I know that it's not past narrative, okay. is the thing, so I don't really know okay. what I'm saying. Has Roger been teaching you about the bog consecutive? <laughs> Just a baby bit. Just a little bit, yeah. See, he's tainting your mind with falsehoods. Mm -hmm. Um, It possibly could be a converted perfect if if you wanted to run with that. uh, That'd be fine. But it is PL, uh, which is good. Um, So the Lord has um, caused the people to be far away and multiplied their emptiness in the midst or multiplied emptiness emptiness in the midst of the land all right so what does all that mean to you just a bad time man just a bad time dark times (laughs) yeah um so from what we learned in 11 is that there are no people in the dwellings there's nobody inhabiting the city there's no people inhabiting the houses um, the land is completely laid waste. God has removed the people far away and multiplied um, the emptiness of the land. So the land has no people. That's these two verses are really overemphasizing the fact that the people are in exile, that he has sent them away from the land. And God found six or seven different ways to say just that. All right, it is dark times. Um, I really don't know if things get better. Well, we only have one more verse here. Anybody feel like finishing this or should we save it for tomorrow? I guess we're saving it for tomorrow. Nobody wants to dive in. All right. What time is it? What time is it? 10 o'clock. Oh. Yep, all right. Well, we'll uh, leave the suspense for tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Um, we may read a little bit more of Isaiah just for the fun of it because, you know, we can. Um, thank you all. Any thoughts or questions? All righty. Well, good. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow evening. The hit to Bye.